come to Bhattakanasana. So a seated Bhattakanasana. So Baddha Konasana, soles of the feet are together, knees are open up wide. Ooh, I got some fuzzies from those sacks, that's cute. I got hairy toes tonight. <laughs> All right. And then you can walk your hips closer into your heels or heels closer into your hips. Grab onto ankles or shins, sit up nice and tall. Flexing your toes back. You can also bring hands back behind you. And some people might find it more comfortable to sit up on a blanket for Baddha Konasana. So pull in a prop if you'd like to. Open your chest. Begin to drop your breathing in and out through your nose. So finding that ujjayi breath, seeing if you can hear the sound of your breath. Right. Letting your hips get heavy, your knees open out wide. Making sure that your arms are supporting you either by pulling your chest forward if you have hands on ankles or by propping your spine up long if you prefer fingertips behind you. Maybe tenting up, pulling the palms up, just finger pads down. So tonight's class is going to be a forest yoga influenced class. So not quite so much of a flow or a link, but holding and deepening of postures. And we'll transition in a supportive progression, but it'll be a little bit different. There's a couple of things that I want you to focus on in several poses, and that is the activation of your feet. So in a lot of poses, I have brought this into just my general practice of pulling my toes up off of the ground and noticing how that will activate around my ankles, my shins, all the way up to my knees. So here in your Baddha Konasana, notice if your toes are a little bit limp. See if you can actively pull your toes away from each other, but press the balls of the feet in so that toes are pointing apart, spreading wide. Notice how maybe the bottom of your legs started to turn on, started to come into the equation a little bit more. Continue to breathe in and out through your nose, ujjayi breath. And then we're going to move into Uriana Banda. So if you are pregnant, I'm not sure if Kim is joining us tonight, you're not going to do this uh, breath work. Um, and what it looks like, in case you don't remember, is it's a bind, a banda, right at your solar plexus or your diaphragm. So you'll exhale all of the air out and we'll do this together. <sighs> Forcefully, hold on empty. And then you'll let your belly go. So you create a bind or a suction between your pelvic floor and your diaphragm. It compresses the digestive organs, and then when you release it, it kind of floods that area with energy. So uh, Baddha Konasana is a great place to do that pose. So if you have your hands behind you, bring them forward, grab onto your ankles. Sit up nice and tall. A Couple things that might help you get Uddiyana Bandha if you're not familiar with it. 
is a gentle tuck of the chin. Also swallowing without any air in your lungs after we do the forceful exhale can help you find that and catch that suction or that lock. And it just takes practice. And then one day you'll kind of be like, I got it. I think that was it. You know, just kind of like riding a bike, right? You just gotta practice until it clicks one day or handstand. <laughs> All right. Inhale through your nose. And then exhale through your nose. Relax your shoulders. Maybe even let your gaze start to drop. Get a little bit half-lidded. Inhale again. Holding on to your ankles. Open mouth. Exhale all of the air out. <sighs> Hold on empty. Seal your lips. Catching Uddiyana Banda. You'll feel that suction. You'll feel your ribs spread wide. You're actually not using the muscles of your abdominals. And then release and take a deep breath in. So this grip on your ankles will help you pull. So once you get Uddiyana Bandha, you can start to lengthen your spine, pulling that stretch in your abs. So here, I'll do it again, uh, demonstrating. So that's what it looks like. It's uh, compression, <sighs> your diaphragm pulled down, spread, your ribs spread wide. All right, so we'll see if we can do that one more time in our Baddha Konasana. Sit up nice and tall, grip onto your ankles. Exhale all of the air. Inhale through your nose. And exhale through your nose. Sit up nice and tall. Take another inhale. See if you can drop into your body, connecting body and breath. Open mouth, exhale. <sighs> Seal your lips, hold on empty. Once you catch it, See if you can pull your spine long using your grip on your ankles. And then you'll release your belly. Take a deep breath in. Begin to breathe again in and out through your nose, slow, steady. And then Find your strap or whatever you're using for a strap tonight. You're gonna to take your right foot and bring it in. So your heel comes in towards your pelvis and we're going to go into half lotus pose. So in half lotus, you'll take your left foot. You're going to bring the outside of that foot as high up onto your hip crease as you can. Now, as you start to press the top of your foot down over the inside of this thigh, you might notice it's a little bit uncomfortable. We don't usually do this pose very often and it can be a little bit tweaky on the knee. So make sure that you are, again, flexing that foot as you press it down. And don't pull this knee down, but instead let it just gently open externally rotating your legs. And if this is super uncomfortable, then you don't have to take this pose and you can just go to Sukhasana, comfortable seated position. Half Lotus is one of those poses or full Lotus rather, really does a doozy sometimes on you. All right, so you're gonna take your strap and loop it around that foot and then bring the tail under the strap behind you over to the left side. Sit up nice and tall. Think about flexing that top foot, pressing the top of that foot into the inner thigh, and then start to walk your hands over to the left. Using your right hand, start to, oh, left hand, 
start to find that strap and walk your fingers as far as they'll go. Maybe for some of you, you might be able to reach the toes on that top foot. I cannot reach those toes, so I like the strap. Okay, so getting a good grip, starting to open up the left shoulder, pull the left elbow back, and then use your right hand on the opposite knee to gently guide you deeper into the twist. Press down through your hips, sit up tall through the crown of your head, inhale. And then exhale, gently draw that left shoulder back even more. Pull the left elbow tip back. Grip onto either toes or that strap to help secure you in this twisted position. One more time, take a deep inhale. Exhale. Do your best to keep your chin in line with the middle of your sternum so that you're not cranking your gaze over that left shoulder, but instead manually pulling that shoulder blade in towards the spine and back by muscle engagement. So bringing the chin into the equation and, and rotating the neck is not gonna deepen your twist. Instead, let it be more from the anchor of your hips up to your shoulders. Another inhale. And then exhale, slowly release, letting the strap slip out of the hand, coming back to center, removing the strap, and then taking the left leg forward, right leg forward. Extend your feet, give them a nice little shake. They kind of look like mermaids tonight. That's fun. <laughs> All right. We're not going to go to mermaid though, in case you got your hopes up. Let's switch to the next side. All right. Bring the left leg in, heel towards pelvis, and then right leg up, flex that foot, placing it in half lotus pose. So the outside, the knife edge, is high up towards the hip crease as you can, letting those toes fold open, pressing the top of the foot down, and then finding your strap, lassoing around the top of the foot. So maybe you have to take it out to get that last foot and pull it back in. Sitting up nice and tall, maybe grabbing your glute so you have two hip points connected down, and then take the strap and move it behind you to the other side. Sit up nice and tall. So here, Noticing how this top knee feels. Activating this foot, pressing so that you're not limply going into lotus pose, but instead you have a strong foundation, strong base. Inhale, and then exhale, start to walk yourself over to the right side. So your left hand will find your right knee, and then your right hand will find the strap. Work your way across your back, Maybe finding your toes. Almost get these toes on this side. Shoulders are so different from side to side. All right, anchor down on top of the knee. And with that strap, inhale, push down through your sit bones, sit up tall. Exhale, start to rotate around your spine. Drawing your right shoulder back using your right elbow to pull back, but keeping your gaze over to the front or back, whatever it is of your mat, chin over your sternum. Inhale. Exhale. Pulling the exhale out long, strong and steady so the Beginning and the end of your exhale are equally as powerful. And inhale. Exhale. Gently opening up the right front of the shoulder, the right pectoral. Another breath in. And then exhale, slowly release. Take the strap, move it off to the side. All right. Extend both of the legs out in front of you. Give them a gentle wiggle. 
And then using your hand, gently pull your knees in and then come to all fours facing the front of your mat. So we're going to move into a classical, or not classical, but Suri Namaskar A. So um, it's in most vinyasa classes, the most used flow. We're gonna do it a couple times on the mat, and then we're gonna move the mat out of the way and do it a couple times with super turbo abs. <laughs> All right. So here in your all fours, tuck your toes, inhale, lift your gaze up. Exhale, draw your chin in towards your chest, gaze at your knees, press your hands, hover your knees up, toes tucked. Inhale, lift your gaze up, a little bit more difficult. Keep those knees hovered, exhale, pull in, protract your shoulders so your spine lifts. Press your hands into the floor. Inhale, lift your gaze. Exhale, draw chin in towards chest. Start to press your hips back and then slowly straighten your legs. Maybe a little bit of a shorter downward facing dog. Pedal out your heels, maybe finding a gentle tap heel down to mat in the shorter down dog position. Keep pressing your palms down into the mat. Strong arms. Then slow down the pedaling of your heels. Take an inhale. Exhale, slowly walk yourself, Uttanasana to the front of the mat. Letting yourself have a gentle bend in your knees. Drop your fists down in between your big toe mounds. Bend your knees. And then inhale, press up, halfway lift. Pause here. Think about your torso being level. Think about rotating your thighs in so that your hip points shoot directly back behind you. And then crown of the head is shooting forward. Take another inhale here. Toes pull up. Balls of the feet and heels of the feet press down. Exhale, fold. Draw your hands down your shins. Let your feet now get a little bit lazy. Let your toes drop down. Do not activate your feet. This time, pull up, inhale, hands slide up your shins. Anchor your hands just below your knees, halfway lift. Notice if you feel a little bit more, a little bit less stable without the conscious activation of your feet. Then gazing down at your feet, hands again, just below the knees, start to pull your toes up, press down through the balls of your feet. Notice if underneath the grip of your palms, you start to feel the muscles turn on. I like to call the muscles on the front of my shins, my flip-flop muscles. They don't get a good workout in the winter here in Colorado. Well, for some people, <laughs> but you can feel them just start to turn on and maybe even all the way around to your calf. Inhale, exhale, fold. See if you can keep that activation. Press through your feet, inhale, come all the way up to standing. Reach your arms up overhead. Exhale, bring your hands down to heart center. Turn on your quads. Keep those feet active. They're just a gentle reminder to keep the entire lower body engaged. Inhale, reach your arms back up. And then exhale, fold. Plant your hands, step both feet back into a plank. Always options to come down to the knees. Inhale here in your plank pose, draw your navel up and in. Keep a strong staff-like position. And then exhale, slowly lower down, keeping your palms spread, pressing your palms into the mat. Press the tops of your feet down. Inhale, low cobra pose. Draw your elbow tips back to graze your side ribs and only lift your gaze high enough that it, chin is parallel with the floor. Exhale, lower down, tuck your toes. Inhale, press up. 
and back downward facing dog keeping a gentle bend in your knees as you reach your hips up and high and then pressing through your palms especially through thumb and pointer finger see if you can work your hips even a little bit higher up inhale Feel in the upper back. Exhale, drop your heels a little bit closer to the earth. Inhale. Feel all side, front, back of the chest cavity. Exhale. Drop that energy down the back of your leg. Move your gaze to your thumbs. Inhale. Exhale, slowly walk your way to the front of your mat. All right, once you get there, drop fists down between your heels, curl your toes up, slide your hands up your shins, inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold. Keep those toes active, keep your feet pressing down. Inhale, come all the way up to standing. Exhale, hands down to heart center. Find a strong standing posture. Inhale, sweep your arms up, look up. Exhale, fold. Gaze at your toes. Can you lift them all off the mat? Can you keep the mounds of the toes down just behind? Can you lift your arches a little bit higher? Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold, plant your hands, step, step back, plank pose. Inhale, rock forward, shoulders come in front of your wrists. This time option to lower down all the way to Cobra Pose or halfway through Chaturanga. If you're lowering down halfway, stop when your shoulders are still over your elbow so they're not dropping forward. Pull through onto the tops of your feet, actively press the tops of your feet down, lift your gaze forward, Urva Mukha Svanasana, Upward Facing Dog. Gazes forward, inhale. If you're in Up Dog, you'll pull your toes in and curl over your toes, Downward Facing Dog. Breath in and out. Gentle bend in the knees, spread your palms wide, lift your hips high. Inhale, through your nose, exhale heels down. One more time. Inhale. Look forward. Exhale. All of the air out. Draw your navel in through your spine. Either step, step, or hop to the front of your mat. Forward fold. All right. Activate your feet. Inhale. Press up. Halfway lift. Exhale. Fold. Stop here. Bring your hands down. Open up your feet wide. And then you're gonna lift up your mat, fold it up, and bring it in front of you. Now, if you'd like to still use your mat as a grippy um, surface for your hands, then you can unfold a little bit of it so that you can put your hands down. And you're gonna slide in whatever prop you're using tonight. Our floors are full of plaster. Did a little demo project over the weekend that was Exciting, but an absolute mess. So, my is going to act like a mop. All right, this is gonna be fun. Core work, let's turn it on. All right, inhale, reach your arms up. And exhale, fold. Still feet are active. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, plant your hands onto your mat or just in front of whatever you're sliding on and press into your hands to slide your feet back into a plank position. All right, feet are active. You're pushing back, but now you're kind of drawing in so you don't just slide out and land on your belly. Take a breath in here. Exhale, lower down halfway or all the way. All right, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide your, your blanket or prop out so that you're on the top of your feet and then pull through for cobra or up dog. 
So you'll see a little bit of movement in my feet here as I pull through. You wanna really make sure that you're pulling your chest through. You can actually start to see that movement in your prop. Inhale, exhale, pull in, slide over your toes, downward facing dog. So this down dog, using a lot more core work than we typically do. You have to pull your heels a little bit towards the back of your wrists so that you don't keep sliding back out into a plank pose. Inhale. Your muscle might be a little bit shorter of a down dog. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more time, inhale. Exhale all of the air out, look forward, start to shift forward and then pull your feet in behind your wrist. So it's a big workout, it's a lot of core. Now I think that it's easier to first bring my shoulders forward and then pike up. You can slide back and try just drawing everything up and in, but I find that by bringing my shoulders over my wrist, transferring the weight forward first, you start to find the strength of stacking, much like in some of our handstands and L handstand at the wall practice. All right, now you know the drill. Inhale, lift halfway. And then exhale, fold, maybe compressing a little bit more hand behind calves. Inhale, come all the way up to standing. See if you can keep your legs active, lift your toes. Exhale, hands down to heart center. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, fold, all the way down, hands to toes. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, half lift. Exhale, fold, plant your hands onto your mat or onto the floor. Start to move the weight first into your palms and then slide your feet back. Shoulders are still over the wrists. Inhale, exhale, lower down halfway or all the way. Kick your toes back. Inhale, pull through. Upward facing dog or cobra. Draw your heels towards each other. Thighs are lifted if you're in upward facing dog. And then, so lift your heels, curl over your toes and pull it in, shift back, downward facing dog. Pull it in being the slider of your choice tonight. Inhale, exhale. Spread your palms, keep them rooted down into the mat or into the floor. Another breath in and out. Inhale, gaze forward at your thumbs. Exhale, slide forward, drawing heels or toes rather right behind wrists. Inhale, pull up halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands down to heart center. So now we're gonna move through a little bit quicker. Drop your arms, inhale, lift them up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands, slide your feet back. Inhale and plank. Exhale, lower down halfway. Kick your toes out. Inhale, pull through upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, curl over your toes, slide them in. Shift your hips back, downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in and out. Oh, my blanket's slowly sliding, inhale. Exhale, keep gripping down through your fingers, move your gaze, inhale. Exhale, slide the blanket behind your wrist to the front of the mat. Inhale, pull up halfway. Ooh, I'm getting warm. Exhale, fold. 
Inhale, stretch your arms up. Exhale, hands down to heart center. Last time through. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, fold. Keep planting your feet down. Inhale, pull your hands up your shins. Are your bottom legs active? Exhale, fold, plant your hands. Shift the weight over your shoulders and slide back, plank. Inhale, exhale, lower down halfway. Kick your toes back, top of your feet on your slider. Inhale, pull through, upward facing dog. Draw your heels towards each other. Curl over your toes, exhale, down dog. Hips more centered between hands and feet. Take a deep breath in and out. Inhale, exhale, inhale forward, gaze, exhale, feet to wrists. Last time, inhale, lift up halfway and exhale, fold. Inhale, stretch your arms up. And exhale, bring your hands together to heart center. So they step off your slider, move it to the side. You can check how dirty it is after class. <laughs> and then take your mat and bring it back out. I love you, sticky mat. <laughs> so much easier than practicing on the slippery floors. <laughs> okay. Slowly come down to hands and knees. And we're just going to step our left foot forward. Bring left knee over left ankle. Finger tips, peace fingers rather on the floor. Lift your gaze and draw your chest forward. Press down through your right shin, right knee. Tuck your right toe under. So foot is active and then bring your hands up onto that left thigh. Either choose to stay here, hands resting on your thigh, or you can reach your arms up overhead. Right, and then we're gonna make an isometric contraction, drawing your left heel back, right knee forward. And we're gonna hold that for the count of 10. Inhale. And then exhale. Start to pull left heel back, right knee forward. Continue to breathe. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Release. Let your lunge get a little bit lower to the ground. I'm going to do that one more time. Inhale. Exhale. In your inhale, draw your left heel towards your right knee and your right knee forward. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Release. Let your loungey lunge get a little bit lower and bring your hands down to the mat. Step your left foot back into all fours. We do a little bit of hip swing side to side. Release your SI joint. And then step your right foot forward. Stack ankle over knee. Peace fingers down into the floor. Lift your gaze, draw your lunge a little bit more forward. Tuck your left toes, activate that back shin and walk your hands up. So when you pull your feet forward, it's a lot of work in the hip flexors and your psoas. So right here, let your psoas enjoy a little bit of stretch, a little bit of opening, and then some contraction. Reach arms up if you do that on the other side, inhale. And exhale slowly through your nose. Begin your inhale, pull your right heel back, left knee forward, hold for 10, 9, 8, 
seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Release, let your knee can travel even over your ankle right here because we've got the bottom knee grounded. It's not weight bearing. Stretch out that psoas, give it a nice deep stretch. And then inhale, exhale. As you begin your inhale, pull right knee or right heel back, left knee forward, hold. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, continuing to breathe, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, release, stretch it out, bring your hands down, and then down to the mat. Slowly bring your right foot back into all fours, again, bring some Gentle movement, swaying the hips. Please change your shoes. All right. And then bring your forearms down to the mat. Grab opposite elbows. We're moving into dolphin pose. If you really liked using the block on your with your hands, we kind of discussed that. I think Jane, you and I and Michelle talked about that um, that we did last week. Then bring a block in or a book thick book. Otherwise, palm spread pinky or middle finger rather in line with your forearms. And then gazing back at your knees, tuck your toes, lift your hips up. Inhale, walk your hips high forward by bringing your toes in. Gentle bend in the knees. Exhale. Let your heels drop down. Press your forearms down into the mat. Pull your shoulder blades away from your spine. Take a deep breath in. All right, see if here, looking back at your feet, you can activate. See if you can draw your toes up off of the mat so that the balls of your foot are grounded down. Active legs. Press more into your forearms. Shift your hips a little bit farther back. Take a deep inhale. And exhale. One more time. Inhale. Broaden your upper back. Inflate the top of your lungs. Exhale. Let your knees come down. Bring them together and press the tops of your feet down. Embryo pose. Let your forehead come down and hands drop back towards your toes. Let your shoulders shrug forward. Now letting gravity naturally protract them away from your spine. Take a deep inhale here. The compression in the front of your body forces your breath to go into the back space behind your heart. Exhale, do that two more times. And a deep breath in. Feeling the compression in the front, expansion in the back. Exhale. Last time, deep breath in. And out. So to walk your hands forward, press into the mat and slowly come up onto your heels into a thunderbolt pose. We're gonna stretch the tops of our feet now. So start by pressing your hands either forward or you can bring them back. So knowing if you have any foot problems, maybe forward, and you're just gonna lift your knees up. So that's kind of step one. Step two is to bring your hands a little bit more behind you, rock back, use your hands to support. Step three or third level, bring your hands even farther, lift your knees up so that you're more on the very tops, so almost of your toes. So it's just deepening the stretch in the metatarsals and all of those ligaments that connect all of those metatarsals on the top of your foot. Draw your navel in. Breathe in. Breathe out. 
slowly lower yourself down. Woo, big stretch. All right, bring your hands back forward, tuck your toes, and then lift up to a nice down dog. Oh, sticky surface that is connected between hands and feet, so good. Inhale, lift your left leg high. Exhale, step your left foot forward. All right, from here, bring both hands to the inside of your left foot. Start to pivot your back foot out to the side, moving into Skandasana. You'll lower your hips, bend your left knee generously. Use your left hand to scoop your left leg back. And then pivot those bright back toes up active back foot you might be up here more supported you might be a little bit lower your front heel might be lifted everybody's somewhere a little bit different inhale walk your hands through center come to the back use your right elbow to pull your right knee back and then left toes up towards the ceiling grounding your left heel down into the mat begin to move side to side gently opening up your hips, your adductors on the inside. If you want to use your core a little bit more, do it ninja style, hands together at Samasthi Tahi at your heart. And then once you come back to the back of your mat, plant your hands, move your hips to center, place your feet down to the side of the mat, press through the outside of your feet, prasarata, wide leg forward fold. All right, now here, activate your toes, pull them up, press the balls of your feet down, see your arches lift, inhale, lift up halfway. Keep that activation in your feet. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift up halfway. And exhale, fold. Get a little bit deeper. Maybe walk your hand behind you or reach for your ankles. Gently pull yourself down. One more time. Inhale, hands slide in under your chest. And then final exhale, fold. Keep actively pressing your feet down, keeping your toes lifted. And then bend your knees, pivot your heels in, toes out. We're gonna walk ourselves up into horse stance, knees bent, tracking over your toes. Think about opening up your inner thighs, sitting your hips down. And then a little bit different, we're gonna walk our hands in. So you want your heels of your hands to again be just as high as they can on your hip flexor. And then press into the top of your femurs, shoulders shrug up for a little bit of back traction. So you can feel your spine getting a little bit longer here, pulling the skin gently away from those hip points. See if you can sit down a little bit lower, using the structure of your arms here to hold you up and then activate your toes. Inhale, exhale. If you want to add a little bit of complexity here, we can do one round of Uddiyana Bandha. Your choice if you wanna go there or not. You can either hang out in horse pose or we'll inhale. Exhale all of the air out through your nose. Then inhale. Open mouth, exhale. So the tractioning of your hands pressing into your thighs will help lengthen your spine, lengthening out that banda. Then you'll Release the banda, let your belly go before you take your breath in. Do that one more time for a good measure. 
Inhale through your nose. And then exhale through your nose. Inhale. Open mouth, exhale. <sighs> Press hands into thigh. Release your belly, take a breath in. Press through your feet. Reach your arms up, overhead, toes forward. And exhale, fold, wide leg forward, fold. Walk your hands back to the front of your mat. And then you're going to step forward to the front of your mat. Again, drop your wrists or fists rather down between your toes. Activate your feet, bend your knees. Inhale, reach your arms up, Utkatasana, chair pose. Put your gaze forward and think about squeezing an imaginary beach ball between your palms. Lengthen your tailbone down and lift your arms up only as much as your shoulders allow without getting a big sway in your low back, compressing your lumbar spine. Right, keeping your gaze forward, you're gonna move the weight into your right foot, lift your left knee up, flex that toe like crazy and bring the foot across for figure four. So you're resting the outside of the ankle just above the knee. Sit down and back, bring your hands to your hips. You wanna square your hips here. So notice if this lifted left leg, that hip is higher, and if it is, gently bring it back down. Now, gaze at the bottom foot, or rather your lifted foot. Keep that foot active, toes flexing back. Bring one hand to the inside of your knee, one hand to the bottom of the foot, Press your foot into your hand so that you have something to be pushing into and then gently apply some pressure to the inside of your knee. See if you can sit down a little bit deeper into your figure four. Gaze is down and forward. Draw your navel in if you want to stay here or using the hand that's pressing into the foot start to use that to pivot bring the elbow of your left hand into the arch of your left foot make a fist start to move your gaze over to the right side the right hand make a paper put it over the rock beginning to twist over to the left side, or to the right side, rather. Feel the stretch all the way down the left side of the spine, your left nadi. Take a deep breath in. Slowly release. Unwinding, back to figure four, pressing through that foot and stepping it out. Whew. And then roll your ankles, rocking from one leg to the other. If you'd rather do some cosmic hula hoop or just press into the top of each foot, do something to shake it out. And then re-anchor. Gently fold Uttanasana, bring your fists down, activate your feet. Slowly bend your knees, reach your arms forward, squeeze that imaginary beach ball, and bring your arms up. Lengthen your tailbone again. Remember, just to bring the arms up as high as your shoulders allow. Okay. Press down through that left foot, lift your right knee up gazing at something that's not moving so maybe not me <laughs> down on the floor is a good place to start flex that foot and place the outside of your right ankle above your left knee start to sit down and back flexing that top foot bring your hands to your hips 
Begin to square your hips, even out side to side. Draw your navel in so you are using your core here. And then flexing that foot, bring one palm down to the bottom of your foot, press into your foot and keeping that foot flexed. So again, that muscle activation is radiating all the way up to your knee. You can start to apply some gentle pressure to the inside of your knee, opening up the outside abductor. Start to fold and hinge a little bit more forward. Keep a very active foot. And if you're gonna take the twist, press into the bottom of the foot to initiate. Start to slowly move your gaze over to the left side. Bring your right elbow into the arch of your lifted foot. Make a fist. Right palm on top. Press into that fist. Slowly start to pivot around your spine, reaching the crown of your head forward, using your core, take a deep breath in and out. Whee! And inhale, exhale, last inhale. Exhale, slowly start to untwist, coming back, figure four, pressing up to a standing, oh, plant both feet down. Gently rock side to side, maybe rolling the ankles as you move the weight. All right, and then bring your feet together, inhale, reach your arms up, maybe press up onto tippy toes. And then exhale, fold. Bend your knees and slowly come down onto your back. And keeping the left leg extended, draw the right knee in. Compress the right thigh to right ribs. Roll your ankle one direction and then the other. Keep pressing through your left foot like you were pressing into a wall and guide your right knee across for a supine spinal twist. Right palm can extend out to the right side. Gaze can be up or over that right hand. Take an inhale, feel your torso in place. And then as you exhale, let the top knee start to drop down. Seeing how much more you can relax between each breath. Inhale. Exhale, let your body get even heavier. One time, inhale. And exhale, feeling maybe the right shoulder drop to the ground, right knee tap. And using your left hand, gently guide your right knee back up. Give it some compression and extend your right leg wall. And left knee will pull in. Interlace your hands, draw the knee down to the left ribs and then take some little circles with your ankle. Isolating the movement just to the ankle, rolling it. And then slowing down using your right hand, guide your left knee across. Take the same variation with your left hand as you did with your right, extending it out or maybe teeing it out to the side. Gaze up towards the ceiling or over your extended left hand. Inhale. 
feeling that constriction of the twist. And then exhale, letting gravity pull your knee and shoulder down deeper. Inhale. And exhale. One more time, deepest breath in. Feel the twist on the left side. And exhale. Inhale, slowly guide the left knee back up. Give it a gentle squeeze. Bring the right knee up. Give that a gentle squeeze. Maybe pull your forehead up, rounding your neck, forehead in towards the knee. Inhale here. And exhale. Extend legs long. Extend your arms by your side. Let your palms drop up towards the ceiling. Thumbs out to the side. Open your chest. Let your toes drop out to the side. Hips get heavy. Imagine as though there were sandbags across both shoulders, draped over your hips, your ankles, and placed in each palm. Weighing down your body, letting it melt into the mat. Finding a little bit of surrender. No longer having to carry the weight of your body around. Shake those sandbags off, moving your wrists, your ankles. Are you finding a little roll in the shoulders? And the... Stretch your arms up overhead. Inhale, draw your knees up to the ceiling. Plant your feet. And then exhale, roll to one side. Gently press yourself up to a comfortable seat. Up nice and tall. Bring your hands together to heart center. Be curious. Follow your bliss. Namaste.